does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review charged by BoardGameExchange.com, the internet's only board game rental website. And today I am excited to be reviewing The Lord of the Rings from Fantasy Flight Games. This is for ages 12 and up for two to five players. And it'll take you about an hour to play this bad boy. And in The Lord of the Rings, you will actually be doing what you do in the books and in the movies. You will be playing as Frodo and Sam and the other characters you're going to recognize trying to destroy the ring before it corrupts you. This is a cooperative game, something I really enjoy, uh, me and my fiance really enjoy. You're all going to be working together, trying to, you know, you know, taking hits for each other and doing this and passing cards, all working together for one common goal. Either everybody wins or everybody loses, even though you might die before you reach destroying the ring. Very interesting mechanic. Is it a good game? I don't know. Let's open it up and find out. Alright, so inside of The Lord of the Rings, you are going to get a lot of stuff. We're going to try and go over all the components and show you uh, a quick little mock hand so you can see exactly how the game works. First and foremost, we have our 24-page absolutely gorgeous double-sided rule booklet. Uh, it's a very pretty rule booklet. However, it is a bad rule booklet that will frustrate you just how they put it together. Uh, luckily for you, though, the game is not too difficult. After a gameplay or two, you really shouldn't need it too much because you'll learn how to play the game. Uh, what do we got? We got a lot of stuff. We'll just start right at the bottom up here. First, you got your Eye of Sauron. This is the big bad guy. You do not want to reach him on this number track because this is your corruption level. And he's going to be coming down. You're going to be coming up. And you don't want to meet him because if you meet him, you are dead. Who are you? You'll be Sam, you'll be Frodo, you'll be Merry, you'll be Pippin, and you'll be, of course, the lovable fatty. You'll be all these different characters. they got nice little stands, perfectly serviceable components. They're actually very, very nice, and I really enjoyed the artwork on them. Uh, oh, just looking around, we have our money track. You're going to have these little pieces of money that you'll be using to purchase things throughout the game, purchase cards, uh, and also to sometimes save your behind because you will be needing money to do that. You will be trying to destroy the ring, and this is the ring. Every once in a while, you will plop it onto your character, and you will try and uh, do some super sneaky stuff, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. You're going to have these cards over here, which you can only purchase once throughout the game. Uh, they're the special Gandalf Magic cards. As you can see, they have a 5 on them, and this 5 means you're going to need five of these coins to purchase it. They do very, very powerful things that can and will save your behind throughout the game. However, once they are purchased and used, they cannot be purchased again. They are done from the game, so it's going to be uh, very important for you to choose wisely how you use these cards. Next, you're going to have these little tokens over here. You're going to have a sun, a heart, and a ring. You're going to be collecting these as you go through the different locations throughout the game. You need to have all three of them once you complete a location. If you only have two, you lose one health, unless you have a special ability, or you don't lose a health, you actually gain one corruption. If you only have one, you gain two corruptions, so you want to have all three of them. One interesting thing, Frodo is not always going to be the ring bear. Depending on who gets the, the most of these rings, in a specific location, they will become the new ring bear. A nice little mechanic I really did enjoy because I love having the ring. It makes you feel like you're awesome and powerful. Next, you're going to get cards. There's a lot of cards you're going to get. First and foremost, you're going to get your five character cards. Each character has nice artwork and he has their own special ability. Uh, a couple of them are a, lot, are a little bit nicer than other ones, but there's not one particular special ability that you'll be groaning about because you've got it. They all are pretty useful. You're going to get your special customized six-sided dice. When you roll this, generally bad things will happen. There's one side that's blank where good things happen, which means nothing happens. But the majority of the time, bad things will be happening to you in this game, and you will just be trying to survive. In particular, there's the Eye of Sauron, which means you roll this, he moves up one. You roll this, uh, this three, you move three points up the track. So if you roll a three, that's just bad, bad news. Looking at the boards, let's get to the boards. You're going to get three different boards. Uh, two of them are double-sided, and these are locations you're going to be going through. Because as you can see, you start in Bag End, then you'll go to Rivendell, and then Moria. And then we got Moria right here. <coughs> Once you get through Moria, you go through, uh, you'll go to Lothorian right here, and then you'll head to Helm's Deep. If you flip over this Moria board, you will have Helm's Deep on the back. They have, they really nicely use the space they had. And then finally, once you're really starting to get close to the end, you'll be at Shalab's Lair and Mordor, which are on 
this board, which you won't use until the end of the game. I really like how they did that. The last component I haven't gotten to are the event tiles and the cards. The cards are what you're going to be using throughout the game. These are extremely important. You will need these all throughout the game, and they have different little symbols on them. These symbols will help you move through different locations, which I'll show you in the gameplay. Also, you're going to have these event tokens. These event tokens right here are what you're going to have to flip over every time it is someone's turn. Uh, sometimes good things happen. A lot of times bad things happen. But either way, let's just get down to the nitty gritty, show you how the gameplay works a little bit so you can get a feel for how the game works. We're doing a two player game. We got Sam, we got Frodo, we got our guys right here in Bag End. What's going to happen is first each player is going to gain six quest cards. Hey, good thing happens. Actually, all the times you see these arrows in Bag End, Rivendell, and Lothorian, good things are going to happen to you. However, the majority of the game, bad things will be happening. So, in Bag End, you're going to get six cards per player. Great. And then the Ring Bearer may roll the dice to draw and distribute four quest cards amongst the players. But, as you mentioned, when you roll the dice, bad things will happen. So you have to decide, do I want to get four quest cards and then divide them up, or do I just want to say, forget it? So it's really up to you how you do it. And then, next it says, one player may discard two shield symbols, otherwise Sauron moves up one. Now, discarding two shield symbols will not be a problem this, this early in the game because you've just gotten a whole bunch of cards, and it is highly advisable because once Sauron moves, he does not go backwards. You can go forward, say you can be up to nine and then eventually move yourself backwards. However, Sauron just keeps on coming. So one little tip for the game is if you have the option to not move Sauron forward, absolutely do that. But anyway... We're going to go to Bag End, we're going to do this, we're going to go to Rivendell, we're going to do that, we're going to get some more cards. And one thing I really like is, whoever <coughs> is the Ring Bearer is going to have to split up the cards. As much as you would like to keep all these nice cards to yourself, you're going to need to pass them out so your, your, your teammates are not weak. But anyway, you get Bag End, you get Rivendell, good stuff happens, then you get to Moria. Now you're in the, you're in the minds of Moria, bad stuff is going to start happening. you got this nice little board here, let's focus on this now. So... The way you get out of Moria is you have to move this green token all the way across this track to the 20. Now, you'll say, why are there number these numbered? This is actually for scorekeeping, so you can see how well you did in the game. A nice little feature they threw in there. The higher number, obviously, the better you did. But anyway, you're going to be laying down these sword and, uh, sword and axe symbols. So if you lay down a sword and axe symbol, you will move one space and you'll gain whatever's there. So for this one, you'll gain a coin. For right here, you'll gain a, uh, a ring symbol right here. And as I mentioned, you want to have the ring, you want to have the heart, and you want to have the sun. So you're going to be balancing out who is playing where in order to get all three of the symbols so you don't get any corruption because the corruption is bad, as you will remember. So let's go over a quick mock hand. First thing you're going to do when it's your turn is you're going to draw one of these event tiles. Now, this is one you really don't want to see. It's an hourglass. The hourglass will move down and you will have to do the first event. So it says the group discards a peace pipe and a wild card or Sauron moves forward one. Now, this early in the game, that's not a big deal. You'll, you'll happily do that and then you will continue to draw until you get a symbol. Now we have uh, Frodo walking. So I drew the Frodo walking, which means you move this symbol one space over, and whoever is playing, which would be Frodo right now, gains one of these coins, which can be used later on to buy the Gandalf cards, as I mentioned. So now he has a choice. He can play two cards out of his hands. He can play a brown card, and he can play a gray card. And he has to decide where he wants to go. Uh, this special is the Book of Maslow right here. And eventually, uh, a, a couple times throughout the game, if you land on these special cards, you'll be able to draw another card to put in your hand. So that's a really good spot to go. Or right here to get this sun is a really good spot to go. But either way, you're going to be moving your tracks forward and forward and trying to gain all these rings and the hearts and the suns and making sure all your teammates have the rings and the hearts and the sun. Your corruption will be going up and down until eventually you meet Sauron and some of you will die. Uh, for instance, you might have to take one member of the team might have to take two hits for an event. So you might have to decide, all right, who's going to take the hit? Is it going to be Sam or is it going to be Frodo? So you got to say, all right, Sam has a bunch of cards in his hand and he's he's sitting pretty over here. So Frodo will sacrifice himself. 
for the greater good of the team. It is a true cooperative game, and that is how The Lord of the Rings is played. All right, The Lord of the Rings from Fantasy Flight Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, there is a little bit too much luck involved in this game for my liking. You can really steamroll through this game with good dice rolls, and vice versa. You can really just get knocked out of this game real quick with bad dice rolls. There's a little bit too much luck for my liking, but it's not a huge deal breaker. Also, the rule booklet is bad. It has all the information you need in it, which is great, but the way it's laid out is just terrible. You'll constantly be coming to it and saying, why is this information here? I can't find this one rule because it's somewhere that you, you think, why, that, why is it here and not here? And then there's something in the back of the rule booklet that you might need at the beginning of the game, and you're like, why would they possibly put it at the end? It's just not a good rule booklet. Uh, and it shouldn't be this bad of a rule booklet for a game that is actually a relatively simple game once you learn how to play it. Last little nitpick I have about the game is Fatty. Fatty is the fifth character that you can play at. It's a two to five player game. Uh, I don't know why they picked Fatty. I don't think Fatty's in the books. I know Fatty's not in the movies. So I don't know why they actually didn't get a real character from the movies. Maybe because he's a hobbit. I don't know. But anyway, I wasn't a big fan of Fatty. On to the pros though. This is a great game. It doesn't matter if you don't like Lord of the Rings. Uh, this is a fantastic cooperative game that you should try, even if you don't like Lord of the Rings, like I said. Uh, what do I like about the game? I really love the fact that people can die. Now, this could be a con. Some people are not going to like this, that you can die 20 to 30 minutes before the game ends. I really do. It really makes me feel like I have to cooperate with my team. Some people are going to have to take hits for the greater, uh, the greater cause of the good. Uh, the greater cause of the team, I should say. You might have to die to help out the team because you're the, you're the one that should die. And if you're, if you're going to be selfish, you're not going to do too well at this game. You really will have to work as a team, exchanging cards and handing out cards, and, and I love that aspect. You know, in most cooperative games, everybody wins together, everybody loses together. Not in this game. One person can single-handedly win or lose this game at the end based on selfish decisions or on good dice rolls. I really love that. Also, I do love Lord of the Rings. I own a lot of Lord of the Rings games. And this, I think, is my favorite Lord of the Rings game that I have played. It is a great game. In the end, Lord of the Rings from Fantasy Flight Games is a game that should be on your shelf if you enjoy cooperative games. Be sure to check it out. Go get it because it's pretty old. You can probably find it for pretty cheap. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for The Lord of the Rings. For more reviews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Also check out Board Game Exchange, the nationwide board game rental service.